Researchers created a hybrid monkey that glows like a jellyfish. It's a major step towards human-monkey hybrids that could be used for medical research and to grow humanized organs in monkeys. Sound far-fetched? We already grow humanized hearts in genetically modified pigs, but they don't work that well. We might be too distantly related to make human-pig hybrids with organs we can use, but we're a lot closer to monkeys. A chimera is a Greek mythological creature sometimes depicted as part lion, part goat, and part snake. In modern animal research, chimera generally means an organism with cells from two or more genetically distinct embryos, although mythological associations still make their way into scientific journals. In 2010, mouse-rat chimeras were created by Kobayashi and colleagues, not to be confused with Kobayashi the hot dog eating champion. They took mouse embryos that were missing a pancreas gene, PDX1, so they'd normally grow up without a pancreas. The researchers first tried injecting stem cells from another mouse into these pancreas-disabled mouse embryos. The donor mouse's stem cells took over the job of making a pancreas. These green cells are from the donor mouse, and you can see they made their way into a lot of the other organs, too. So that's a mouse-mouse chimera. But after that, they injected rat stem cells into the mouse embryos, and they grew little rat-derived pancreases inside their mouse bodies, making them mouse-rat chimeras. This approach of knocking out certain genes has been used to grow rat-derived eyes, brains, hearts, and other organs inside mouse bodies. Well, mouse-ish bodies, since the rat cells get peppered in all over the place. You can do the same kind of thing with human stem cells. I want to talk about human-animal hybrids and humanoids. It doesn't work that well in rodents, but there's been some success with human-pig chimeras. I'm going to be honest with you. Limited success. I'm kind of retarded. Mark Twain said that if man could be crossed with a cat, it would improve man but deteriorate the cat. And that seems to be true for mice and pigs, too. Human and monkey cells are hard to make chimeras with. That's partly because the U.S. National Institutes of Health paused funding for human-animal hybrid research in 2016. But researchers can still be funded by private foundations or other countries' governments. The Salk Institute put human cells in pig embryos around 2017, and they grew them inside mama pigs for a few weeks before the researchers took them out to see how many human cells survived. Only about 1 in 100,000 cells were human in these chimeric embryos. But a recent study out of China made embryos with human-to-pig ratios closer to 1 in 10,000 and as high as 50 to 60 percent in the temporary embryonic organ they targeted called the mesonephrus. But if you need an organ transplant, do you really want one that's part pig? What about part monkey? A 2021 study said pigs are too distantly related to humans, so it's time to grow humanized organs in monkeys. They squirted some human stem cells into the monkey embryos, and some human cells started to develop alongside the monkey cells. No human-animal chimeras have gotten past the embryonic stage yet, at least not in the published literature, but they're getting close. A study published on November 9, 2023 was a breakthrough for primate chimeras. Researchers tested a bunch of different recipes for growing human stem cells to see which would get along best with the monkey embryos. But instead of using human stem cells, they used stem cells from a different monkey that were genetically engineered to glow green. Green fluorescent protein is a Nobel Prize winning protein that was discovered in jellyfish. GFP is used to mark cells for easy observation, and in this case, they used it to identify cells that came from the donor monkey. The winning recipe was 4CL, which stands for 4 Chemicals Plus Leukemia Inhibitory Factor, LIF, which can stop leukemia cells from spreading. It also happens to stop stem cells from maturing too fast. It worked so well that one embryo grew into a glowing hybrid baby monkey, born the old-fashioned way out of another monkey. And this baby was glowing, all the way from his brain to his balls. More than half of the tissues they tested originated from the donor monkey, including over 90% of the neurons they tested, and about 60% of the gonads. Here's the three-day-old chimeric monkey. You can see the green donor cells in its fingers, its tail, and even its eyes. 
Unfortunately, his green organs didn't work so well. He only lived to be 10 days old before he was euthanized due to respiratory failure and hypothermia. As they fine-tune these techniques, they could produce sophisticated models of human diseases and mental disorders, eventually using real human cells as the donor cells. They could even get donor cells from a specific person with a unique pathology so they could make a personalized disease model. We use animal models so we don't have to experiment so much on humans, but there's a limit to how much we can learn from, say, a mouse model of depression. A mouse just wouldn't understand the pain of going to buy something on Amazon and finding out it's not eligible for prime two-day shipping. But, as we make these models better and better, going from mice to pigs to monkeys, we'll get closer to reproducing the same diseases and disorders in something that's more and more like a human. So where do we draw the line? How do you balance the suffering of these creatures with the potential improvements in human health and well-being that might be the result of the research? And those aren't the only factors that researchers and funders are taking into account. A lot of this study's authors are associated with BGI, a controversial Chinese genetics company. Reuters reported in 2021 that BGI collaborated with the Chinese military to develop a test that collected genetic data from over 8 million pregnant women around the world with questionable informed consent not telling participants their genetic data might be shared with the Chinese government for national security and defense purposes. China itself has restricted the collection of Chinese genetic data by foreign researchers as a matter of national security. I wonder why. BGI says it didn't do anything wrong, but the Biden administration added BGI research to a U.S. trade blacklist this year. That's after some other parts of BGI were blacklisted in 2020, based on reports that they used a large-scale genetic surveillance program to repress Uyghurs and other Muslim minorities. But the real criminal accusations might come from the fashion police. Wait until the Kardashians find out about glowing chimeric babies. The next trend might be finding the hottest fluorescent protein color palette from the rarest sea creatures. It's a real status symbol if your doctor can get your skin to express dangerous, exotic protein colors. OMG, is that D's? D's red? Your kid could take Dune cosplay to a whole new level. To keep up with the latest sci-fi fashion trends, subscribe to I'm Curious and join on Patreon to get access to the Discord server, early access to videos, and live Q&A sessions where I'll talk about a bunch of new research that I don't have time to make into videos. Links in description. Thanks for watching. AI is alien. The chimeras are alien. Aliens are already here. Interdimensionally, your brain's already filtering out most stuff because you can't handle it. Your eyes are already seeing it. Like a cat when it's like seeing something or a dog.